wine or bottle? Which is the better choice for you? We are here with author Suzanne Barston to share why breastfeeding isn't always an option for every mother, and that is okay. Thank you for joining us, Suzanne. Thanks for having me. I got to say, okay, so your book, it's called Bottled Up, and right on the cover right away, it says... You're redefining the notion that the way we feed our babies defines the type of mother that we are. That has never been more true. I never realized it until I had my own son. But for the people at home, can you kind of explain that? Sure. I think that, you know, we are coming out of a time where we were a very bottle feeding prevalent society. Mm -hmm. And because of that, there's been a tremendous push to promote breastfeeding, which is fabulous. Um, but unfortunately, I think that we've sort of taken it a little bit overboard and that women who are now bottle feeding for whatever reason, whether yeah. it be choice or, or not, mm -hmm. um, are really feeling judged and like they're not meeting the gold standard of motherhood. And you're pulling from personal experience here in the book. It's not just your opinion. Tell us yeah. quickly a little bit about your experience with breastfeeding. Sure, um, I really wanted to breastfeed my, my first child, my son, um, but we faced a bunch of problems from the start. He couldn't latch. Um, I had really severe postpartum depression, which for me was very much tied into my struggle to breastfeed. Yeah. Um, and then he ultimately ended up being allergic to dairy and no matter what I cut out of my diet, I know. Same thing. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's, as you know, it's really, really tough. Um, and I did the elimination diet, I tried everything they told me, and I was actually vegan at the time. Yeah. So it, I wasn't eating dairy to begin with, but I was Maybe extra. the soy yeah. or whatever, yeah. So I cut out soy, I cut out green leafy vegetables. I'm gonna tell you, you go yeah. home and look in your cabinet, and I cried, I yeah. mean, thinking I'd had to cut all this stuff out. Oh my gosh, I yeah. was like, what do I eat? Bread yeah. and water, dairy-free yeah. bread and water. <laughs> um, but it didn't work, so ultimately we ended up on hypoallergenic formula, which was, for us, um, the magic cure. Sure. Um, it isn't for everyone, and um, obviously in your case, you know, I think for most women, the elimination diet does work. Yeah, we, I mean, it was a, it was a rough trial, but it did end up working out, so. Yeah. Um, but you felt like there weren't resources, right? And I, I have to yeah. be honest, when your book first came to my desk, I was like, I don't agree with this woman. <laughs> She's totally gonna be pushing formula and poo-pooing on breastfeeding, but you're not. You're mm -hmm. actually, I took some time to go through it, and I digress, I apologize, <laughs> but you're not judging people. So what is in your book? What is the resource here? Sure, well, I really wanted there to be something out there for the woman who thought breastfeeding was great, but chose not to or could not for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Because I do think that we've entered this time where everything's so either or you know and yeah. it's either you're a Black bottle feeder white. yeah and mm -hmm. it's not like that i mean the woman that i represent i um i have a blog and a facebook page with a, a rather large community of women who feel similarly to me and i think what we find so frustrating is that people assume it's bottle feeder against breastfeeder or vice versa yeah. and it's really not it's a judgment against people who don't judge and who really want a more accepting kind of sisterhood and the um, judgment goes both ways because some yeah. people who breastfeed, I have a friend who does everything naturally and people call her a hippie and that's Absolutely. what medicine is for. So, I mean, the judgment does go both ways. How do we become more of a society of we're all mothers, we're all women? How do we stop judging each other? Well, I think the first thing is people need to understand why women choose not to breastfeed. Okay. Um, I think that's really important because there's a lot of assumptions being made that either women are uneducated or unsupported or selfish. And those are really the three columns you're gonna fit into. Okay. And that's just not the case. I mean, there are medical reasons why women cannot breastfeed. And we hear this statistic a lot thrown around that you know every almost every woman can breastfeed. Only between one and 5% of women can't. Well, even if that is true, and I, I'm not convinced that it is, which I explain in the book. Sure. Um, but even if it is, you're talking, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of women who give birth so in America. it's still a large number, it's that a huge small number. percentage. Yeah, okay. it's a huge number. If your baby is full and you're both happy and everybody's less stressed, yeah. I say go for it. Absolutely. So thank you, Suzanne. I appreciate it. Her book, Bottled Up, is available now, and you can check out more info on our website, lifeloveshopping.com. Thanks, ladies. Well, parents also have the task of teaching their child important skills, one being manners. These tips will help you raise respectful boys and girls. So if you have a daughter, pay attention to her clothes. Clothes today have kind of lost their charm and modesty, so make sure she dresses her age. Work on that attitude. Most small children show attitudes from a young age, so if you start to see one forming, don't wait until it's too late to nip it in the bud. And Avoid tearing them down. There's definitely a difference between scolding and tearing your child down. Children need to be taught character. So start with affirming words and positive attitudes and 
actions are always important no matter how small it may seem. Be sure they realize that all actions have consequences. And the most important thing, you the parent, sets the example. Children soak up everything around them, so be sure that your words and actions always line up because children will do and repeat everything they see or hear around them. I'm sure Michelle Jack has been <laughs> taking some cues from you, right? It, it's so true. And the other thing I think we left out is parents have to agree on their decisions. Mm -hmm. You cannot, especially in front of the kid, one per, one parent say one thing yeah. and the other say the other, then they know, ooh, I can hit up mom for this and dad for that. Like, yep. You guys have to be united force. And um, we'll see if I can still stick to that once he hits toddler age. Right, it's, it's, all, to it's all easy now <laughs> when he can't fully yeah. talk and form sentences. Right. <laughs> okay, well, when it comes to being a role model, parents also need to do that when it comes to social media. It's time to figure out how to tweet. There are three methods you can focus on. These come from galtime.com. Consider this. More things you have in common equals more discussions to talk about. So if parents are on social media, it adds another thing they have in common with the kids. And then you can talk to them about the cool features on Facebook or an interesting Twitter account. And educate yourself. Knowledge is power. This goes with social media as well. Regularly follow articles on parenting and social media. That knowledge will give you confidence to know what you're talking about. And as a result, kids will sense that you're a legitimate figure to look up to. Mm -hmm. And monitor your child's activity online. Just Make sure you balance your actions so your child views you as supportive, like you're making sure they're not being bullied rather than untrusting, say, if you were just snooping through their emails. It's a delicate yeah. balance there for sure. It's true. But it's funny now that, I mean, I am not friends with my parents on Facebook yeah, now yeah. because if they looked back at all the crazy Ooh, stuff that was up there. Thank you, timeline. You know, so you got to get it now while they're young yeah. and get it, get it get started early. But that Facebook wasn't invented when And maybe I was a you kid. make it a requirement that they have to be friends with you. Maybe you can say, listen, I won't post on your wall mm -hmm. and embarrass you, but we have to be friends. That way you can keep up with what they're What's doing because it is really important. It's true. It helps. It definitely opens up conversation yeah. because you can say, oh, you need to follow this person on Twitter. They right. write inspirational quotes or yeah, there's all kinds of really good things out yeah. there. So. Coming up, when life loves shopping returns. Yes, we have tips on how you can easily declutter your coffee table and stage it to make your living space look picture perfect.